Hey, Sam back again, and today's post is about how to train around knee pain. It's not specifically how to address the knee pain, all right, that's probably for another post, because there's obviously many variables that affect your, your pain in your knee and other issues like that. So besides corrective exercises, myofascial release, and some mobility and stability work, uh, we'll save it for another post. But how can you train and still do low body workouts with a little bit of knee pain? Um, when we typically talk about movements in our, in our lower body, all right, we generally have like a, what we have like a positive or negative or a neutral shin angle, right? So for instance, a squat is a positive shin angle. My shin is actually moving forward over uh, the midline of the foot, all right? So in that position, you can see my knee drives forward and that's a positive shin angle. If you do something like a Romanian deadlift, like so for instance, I'm staying quite neutral. My knee or my shin doesn't really move, all right? And those type of movements are really effective for still being able to train uh, lower body, but not affect your knee so bad, all right? So if we take, for instance, a Romanian dish, so I grab the bar and I, and I put it back. I've obviously got a barbell here, but in this position here, I can really get a nice work in my lower body, my hamstrings, my glutes, and my lower back, whilst keep my knees relatively straight, all right? As you can see there, there's not too much bend on my knee, right? I'm not actively pushing them forward. And so in that instance, my knee stays stable and I'm able to get a nice work on my hamstrings. Similar to um, if you, for instance, do like a, a, a hip thrust, if you have this position, I get into this position here and, and I roll down, you can see the top of the movement, my shin is pretty vertical. All right, or at least it should, or at least it should be. Okay, as I come down, it goes into a negative shin angle, then into a positive one. All right, just like so. And that's a really good way of, if you want to load it with a barbell or a kettlebell, or even single leg down and up. Really good way to get a load and to get stress in our glutes and our hamstrings, glutes especially, in that movement. Um, when we talk about a lunge, as you can see here, it's very similar to the squat, right? As I lunge forward, I'm getting that not that positive shin angle and I'm pressing away. And that's gonna cause pressure, right? Because the lower obviously I go down, the more pressure I've got in that knee to drive forward. Some of us as well, I've got tight, uh, quite tight ankles, or we uh, have, yeah, immobile ankles. And so in this, sometimes in this instance, what I generally see is a little bit of a heel rise as you press away. And that heel raise elevates and push pressure on our toes, which then push pressure up the chain into our knees as well, which again causes irritation around the knee. Um, if for instance, you're doing a um, Romanian deadlift, sometimes it's a little bit challenging to get into that movement, right? A lot of times I do see a little bit of knee shifting. So for instance, if I've got two dumbbells, let's take these for instance, and I'm doing Romanian deadlifts, Sometimes what happens is I still drive forward with my knees, all right, in that position there, I'm still going forward. Sometimes you don't really have the awareness or the ability to draw my hips back in that motion to kind of keep my hips and my knees nice and stable. So what I can do, what I've found, generally speaking, and it's not for everyone, all right, is to raise my toes up a little bit. In that instance, if I take this where you remember this here, in that instance, as I go down, it locks my knees in place, okay, and it, and it eliminates that knee shift effectively forward into that positive shin angle and it remains quite neutral. Yeah, just like so. It's also why I quite like doing Bulgarian split squats, right? And you can do a variation of it as well, keeping that front torso, uh, keeping that front knee nice and stable. If I'm into a Bulgarian split squat, if you go quite close, you'll generally see that I have a nice, well, a, a, a positive shin angle. But if I take it further out, here, and I sit back into it a little bit more, you can see it remains relatively stable, all right? And in that instance, you get a nice quad workout without too much pressure going through the knee. The only issue being would be that back knee, depending on the uh, mobility of that back knee and the tightness of the quad, you might get a little bit here because obviously you're effectively doing like a leg curl and it's a stretch on the quad. So if you do get it, for instance, certainly, shuts the quads out. But there's a few ideas there, for instance, in terms of you 
being able to train, find your trainable menu, as a guy called Tony Jamical uh, mentioned many times, and still being able to train a lower body, get a good workout in without pressurizing or, uh, or, or impacting knee pain and finding a way around it. Hope it helps.